What up good people? Listen, you were not here by mistake. God has a special word planned just for you today. So sit back, relax, and get ready to receive. Amen. What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to the J Makapa podcast. If it's your first time, listening here is your extra mercy. If it's not your first time, oh, yes. you're always listening in, guys. Here is your extra mercy. I need to give three oh, personalized yes. extra mercy for people who shouted out to the podcast this past week uh, make sure you tag me so i can actually give you a proper extra immersive because if you don't tag me i don't see it but number one is Bobby Mutabi. here is your extra immersive and also it is uh, i need to give one to tibelo may that is the one uh the lovely lady okay who is introducing the podcast for this month and pro- possibly until we um we uh, go on the podcast break uh but that's bello may if you want to see her face on Instagram. Here is your extra immersive and also Sisi Po oh, yes. Makambi. Um, Sisi Po Nohambo Makambi. I need to give you an extra, extra super immersive um, because um, you oh, yes. really broke down the podcast. Let people know what series you like the most, what it said to you. So here is your extra immersive. Thank you to everyone who's shouting oh, out yes. the podcast and everyone who is. Uh, sharing the podcast with friends, with family, and even the haters, because I'm seeing a lot of good reviews, guys. Thank you so much. But we're going to get into this series. Like as we said, we are trying to make the podcast not too long. Um, we've been talking about your new season. I believe God wants to do great things in your life, new things in your life, not just things he's done before, but new things. And check this out. The one person who is most likely to sabotage your new season is you. It's not the devil. It's not the world. It's not your enemies. It's not the haters. It is you. So we're going to speak uh, about how we can uh, prevent ourselves from sabotaging the new thing God wants to bring in our lives. So let's close our eyes and let us pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you so much for your love. And we thank you for the new season that each person is stepping into, God. I pray that you would uh, just enlighten our hearts and make us prepared to hear from you. May our minds, our hearts, our emotions, everything about us just be prepared to receive. And I pray may we uh, apply this word in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we all said, Amen. Amen. Let's go into the book of Matthew chapter 9. So in the book of Matthew chapter 9, this is when um, a new season was already beginning. Jesus is on the scene. New things. Because Jesus was not on the scene, right? And the lives of people were going in a certain direction. Believers, people who had faith in God, things were going in a certain direction. And they were used to, the Bible even says that there was uh, a period of silence that was going on. So there was Things that was happening before Jesus came. And when Jesus came, it meant a new season was beginning. And basically what we see, even biblically, it is the New Testament. A new season is beginning, right? So in chapter 9 of Matthew, there's already momentum. New, the newness is already happening. Uh, Someone, Jesus just heals a paralyzed man. We also see that Matthew joins the crew with Jesus, becomes one of the disciples. And now we find ourselves in Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 17. Let's read this it says then the disciples of john came to him saying why do we and the pharisees fast but your disciples don't fast jesus said to them can a wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will fast no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch tears away from the garment and the and a worse tear is made neither is new wine put into old wine skins if it is the wine bursts and the wine is spilt and the skins are destroyed but new wine is put into fresh wine skins and so both are preserved what we see here is we see the disciples of john so there was john the baptist who god had raised up and called to prepare the way for jesus to announce that a new season is coming so john the ba- john the baptist had disciples who they would spread this message that guys a new season is coming it's coming it's coming now what happens the new season begins now john the baptist's disciples begin to do what and this is point number one they begin to compare the seasons they begin to ask a question let's read this really quickly in the book of matthew chapter 9 verse 14 it says then the disciples of john came to him saying why do we and the pharisees fast but your disciples don't fast so what they're doing is they're romanticizing their past and one thing you have to make sure you're not doing is romanticizing the things that have gone and when you romanticize those things you automatically start to compare 
You're comparing the things of your old season with the new season. And the next step of that, when you compare, you're going to start to criticize the new things because the new thing is different. The new thing is moving at a different pace. The new thing is the new season is bringing new people into your life. The new season needs you to work in different ways or maybe to decrease things you used to have a lot of or maybe to add things that you used to have a little bit of. So you will start to compare things if you are beginning to sabotage your new season. That is a sign that you're beginning to sabotage the new season. Now, when the Bible says the disciples of John, they had a certain message that they were speaking, a certain mentality, a certain way of seeing the world. Now, these are the words of John, the person they were following. In the book of Matthew chapter 9, earlier in the book, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. We just read in, verse, in chapter 9 where they are criticizing and they are comparing their season with what Jesus is bringing in, the new season. So now let's see the old season and how they were thinking and, and the message they would speak in the old season. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 says, I baptize you with water for, rep for repentance, but he who is coming, he who is coming after me, is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. It says, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So John the Baptist, because he was preparing the way for Jesus, because he was announcing a new season is coming, his message was always about one day. One day something's going to happen. I want to ask you today, are you in a place where you are like the disciples of John, where your mentality is always about one day you're going to serve God more. One day you're going to pray more. One day you're going to surrender it's maybe areas of sin to God. One day you're going to grow in your prayer life. One day you're going to start exercising exercising one day it's, it's always this one day thing i want to tell you that if you are stuck in the one day you're going to miss what god is doing in your life you're going to miss what god wants to bring forth and unpack in your life understand this i want to just go back to comparing seasons understand that a season behind you is not better or it's not worse than what you're going through right now Understand that your life is one story of God revealing who he is and him teaching you things about who he is, bringing glory to God and also uh, showing you who he has called you to be. So it's not a matter of this is better, this is good. No, it is one story and you must appreciate each season for what it is. But make sure that you're not stuck in a season and you're saying one day you're going to step into the things of God. Because if you're stuck in the one day, you'll remain in the one day and sabotage your new season. There are things that God is calling you to start doing and you will keep saying one day. And if you stay there, you will never see the fullness of what God, what God wants to bring into your life. So that's number one. Stop comparing seasons. That will sabotage the new season God wants to bring into your life. Stop looking back thinking something behind you is better. Understand that the new season is the new season. The new season is what you're supposed to hold on to and just let go of what has gone behind. Number two, what we see with the disciples of John. Uh, we read in verse 14, uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 14, it says, Then the disciples of John came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples don't fast? Check this out. The Bible calls them the disciples of John. The disciples of John. So their whole life was based on telling people about a new season is coming. They were saying one day Jesus is going to come. One day he's going to baptize us with fire. One day we're going to see the hand of God move. But what happens when the day comes? They are still identifying themselves with who they were in the old season. I want to ask you today, are you still identifying yourself as someone and you're relating? You, you are seeing yourself from the perspective of your past. Are you still labeling yourself by what people have called you? Are you still labeling labeling yourself by what you had done in your past. Because I want to tell you something. There are some people who you will walk into a new season and because maybe in the old season you were, for instance, we could say you were a manager in a job position. Now you get a new job and you're not a manager, you're just a general um, worker. And when you are a general worker, you're still calling yourself a manager. And you're missing the fact that if you keep identifying yourself as a manager when you are in a new position you're gonna mess up in the new position you're not gonna fully accept what's going on in the new position you are gonna stay in a state of criticism of the new thing that is being unveiled and being unpacked in your life and this is the same thing in your walk with God 
That if you call yourself, hey, you know, God did this in your life. God did this in your past. God has helped you through these things. And now you label yourself because of things in the past. When a God wants to bring you into a new season, God may be calling you to take that label off. Even if it was a good label, take it off because he wants to teach you something new about yourself. And not just teach you something new about yourself, but he needs you to mold yourself in a form that is going to better bless the people around you. Can someone say amen today? Don't sabotage your new season by identifying yourself with the old season. The disciples of John, rightfully speaking, if we think about it, they were in a position where if they truly transitioned into their new season they could have been the 12 disciples but no they stayed disciples of john they stayed with the old mentality they stayed with the old habits and when god brought the new season they missed it they could have been those walking side by side with Jesus because they were speaking about the new coming about the the new season but they stayed in the old season. I want to tell you one thing, the real thing, some people like to butter it up and say, no, everything is going to work out. You can miss what God is trying to bring in your life. Stop identifying yourself with the old season. Look into the new season and start to redefine what God is going to do through your life. Redefine it. So we see in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 20, John um, the disciples of John, the John the Baptist we're speaking about, when we say disciples of John, John the Baptist, um, we see um, he was speaking about one day, but we look, how did Jesus speak? John the Baptist spoke about one day, one day, one day. Let's, let's look at the words of Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 to 21. It says, the spirit, he was in a synagogue and he pulled out uh, scripture and he began to read to everybody who's in the synagogue. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, Jesus was reading, and, be, and because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering the sight of the blind, to set liberty to, to those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I want you to understand that the disciples of john the baptist were saying one day but jesus was talking about today your new your new season is gonna catch you off guard the new thing god wants to un unpack in your life it's not going to come at the time that you expect it to come. It's not going to come in the, the package you expect it to come. It's going to come in a way that you didn't think that, oh, God can use this. You didn't think God could use this person. You didn't think God could use you in this position. Maybe God would even say, do the things that you are uncomfortable doing. And what is it's going to do, it's, it, and you're going to be tempted, sorry, you're going to be tempted to say, one day, later, um, when, 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 when the time is right, you're going to be tempted to say things like that, but God is going to say now, today, today, today. I want you to know that when we say one day, it's inspirational. This is point number three that I'm speaking about. When you say one day, I'm going to do this. One day, I'm going to change. One day, I'm going to be more patient. One day, I'm going to be more loving. One day, when we talk about one day, 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 one day. It brings inspiration. But when we say today, it's not about inspiration anymore. It's about dedication. When we say we are going to do something today, let's go for a run today, let's go exercise today, let's pray today, let's, let's have two hours of prayer today. It's no longer about inspiration because you don't feel inspired anymore because now the responsibility is before you. And I want you to understand your new season, to walk into it, you must forget about inspiration, forget about feeling right, forget about the right timing, forget about when everything is, is in a place. You need to understand that it's not about inspiration, it's about dedication because in your new season when you think about the new season and what God wants you to start doing and what he wants you to start stepping into you know um, you will feel like saying maybe tomorrow and when you say one day it's gonna make you feel inspired but when God says today you'll most likely say I'm tired I'm tired but I'm tired but but I'm going through some things but but it's a bit hard right now but it's a bit it's a bit difficult right now but but but, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready I'm not the type of a person right now that's what you must understand. Point number three. So point number one is don't compare the seasons. Point number two is identify less with the old season. Don't identify with the old season. Identify with the new season. Number three is you must understand your new season is not about inspiration. It's about dedication. 
God is waiting for you to be dedicated. He's not waiting for you to, to, to have the right feeling about it. Because what happened with the disciples of John, they were uncomfortable with the changes. They were uncomfortable because what Jesus was introducing was not what they were used to doing. So what they started to do was their, their, the feeling of one day, the feeling of one day, as they had been speaking, they had been preaching about this one day that Jesus is going to bring. But when Jesus brought it, it was uncomfortable. I want to tell you, Jesus wants you to change things today. Jesus wants you to change things today. God is looking at you and there are things that you've been postponing. There are things you've been saying later, later, later. There are things you said next year. There are things you said, oh, I don't want to hurt this person by, by, by leaving this situation. There, there are things that you know you must change. And, and I'm telling you, the word of God is saying today, today, there are things that must change. There are things you must stop doing and there are things you must start doing today. No matter what time you're listening to this podcast. And again, when we, like I said, when we speak about new seasons, it's not at the right time or when it suits you. Because it didn't suit the disciples of John. They were used to their pattern. They were used to what they were doing. They were used to thinking the way they thought, to the way, to the, to the way that they were serving God. But God was bringing a change and they were not used to it. They started to criticize it. It's not about inspiration. Forget about inspiration and begin to lean to dedication. Dedication says we don't, we don't wait about how we're feeling. If God is telling us to do something, that's where we're going to go. Even if it catches you off guard, you say, God, I'm still committed to what you've called me to do. Even if it catches you at the wrong time, even if it means you have to sacrifice extra time, you say, God, I'm still committed to what you've called me to do. Let's look in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 15. Jesus brings this, continues, and he, and, he, and he explains this whole thing about this new season, this new teaching, this new way of thinking that he is introducing to the, to, to the world. Let's read it again in the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 15. It says, Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, Can a wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them the day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them then they will fast as no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth onto an old garment for the patch tears away from the garment and a worse tear is made i want you to know that the things of your old season the things that have passed have served you and they must be put aside they have done their job in your life listen i want to say that again the things of your old season they have done their job it is like an old garment when you've put on a, something and now it's beginning to have its holes it means it's done its job don't try to attach the new thing to the old thing because if you're trying to attach the new thing that god is doing in your life what's going to happen is the new thing is going to call you to change and to and to become a, a new way but if you are trying to attach it to the old it's going to bring damage Damage to the old and, and, and I want you to understand there are some things in your past that are good things there are sometimes good things that are in your past but if you want to bring something from the past into the new place you're gonna damage the thing in the past for example there are some things that you may have learned and that may have worked in one situation they're not gonna work in every situation and if you bring that uh, method or that strategy into a new situation it's gonna fail you it's going to fail you. If you're trying to live your life the way you've always been doing it in the new season, that way of life is going to fail you. And do you know what, what it's going to do? It's going to damage the way you see that old thing. That's why you have to leave it where it is and pick up the new thing because it is going to damage the old thing. But then Jesus continues with his teaching. And he says it's not just the old thing that will be damaged, but he says it's even the new thing. It says, uh, it says neither is new wine put into old wine skins. If it is, the wine will burst and the wine will be spilt and the skins will be destroyed. This is, but new wine is put into fresh wine skins. So both are preserved. So what Jesus is saying further than just that the old thing will be damaged, but Jesus is further explaining that if you are old and he is trying to introduce something new into your life you are going to miss out on the new thing listen it's it's look 
if we're talking about relationships, there are some people who, like I said, you can be so you, you can be so molded by our old situation, or your view of the world can be so molded by your past that even, for, for example, if it's in relationship, a, a new godly man or a new godly woman can be introduced into your life. But because your mind is so stuck in the past, you can miss something good that God is introducing to you. And and what will happen is the old is damaged and the new is damaged and the new thing is spilled and wasted. I want to speak to you today and say, don't miss out on what God is trying to bring through to your life. Don't miss out on it. Okay, we're going to do these things. We're going to go through these, these points and then we're going to pray really quickly. We're going to pray. And we say, God, help us to not sabotage the new season. So number one, don't compare the seasons. Don't compare the seasons. That's point number one. Don't compare them. Number two, stop identifying yourself with your old season. Stop identifying yourself with the old season. And number three is don't wait for inspiration. Be dedicated. Be dedicated. Don't say, I want to be inspired. Don't say, I want to be inspired. Say, no, I am dedicated. Don't wait for inspiration. Your new season is about dedication. Let's say this prayer together. Father, I come before you. I thank you so much for your love and your mercy. I pray, God, help us to apply these things that can sabotage the new season. A Holy Spirit, remind us when we sometimes are, are leaning to these things and remind us that, hey, this is a new season. It's going to be different. It's going to be new. But God, we don't want to be like the disciples of John. We want to stay Step into the new thing and be like the disciples of Christ who stepped into the new season. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we all said amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into the J. Copper podcast. I hope that was um, a bit of like a warning, you know, to you that you can just be aware of, hey, hey, I don't want to sabotage the new thing God is bringing in my life. So just be aware, be aware of these things. Don't be like the disciples of John, uh, but instead step into what God has for your life. Um, so if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, uh, on Instagram Live. Thank you so much. Please share the links with all of your loved ones and even the haters. Take care. James 1 verse 22 tells us to be doers and not just hearers of the word. Now that we've heard, let's go out there and get some things done. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs>